Okay. Hey everyone. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. Again, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm, I'm so sorry about this. May has been, oh my god, May has been so crazy and I didn't film anything for my April favourites, um, my April Coast Lights as I call them. And um, this is my April slash May um, combo of favourites because this past two weeks have been absolutely crazy and I just I'm I'm taking a moment to myself right now and this is a treat to myself for to be filming a video um but yeah I'm just running errands this morning it's about um I don't know how to, what time it is probably nine o'clock or something that's around nine or so I went to the post office already and I went to retrieve some parcels um that were delivered at a hotel we are moving. Today is the 20th. We are bank holiday weekend. This video is already going great. Um, I'm all over the place. This um, Today is Friday and it's a bank holiday weekend. Um, so it was bank holiday yesterday and today must be the 19th, I think, of May. And so we are moving out next week. Um, we're moving out next week. I have my driving, uh, I have my driving exam my driving license exam on Monday I failed. <laughs> I have to sit it again. I have to do a reset probably around June, July. Um, I had my birthday last week. I have, uh, it's it's a lot. Work is a lot as well. It's not going great, um, to be honest with you. So it's a lot. It's a lot on just one girl's plate, honestly. And just, yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I haven't been posting on Twitter at all, which is a sure sign that I am not really great mentally. Um, I can count on one hand, in the 13 years I've been on Twitter, um, the, the weeks when I haven't posted anything and it's been just a constant string of me not posting um, because I just, I don't feel well, honestly. I, to be completely honest with you, I go to work, um, I come back home, I make myself something to eat and then I just watch Virgin River and crash into bed and that's it. And that's pretty much my routine, um, my week routine, which is very sad. Um, to, uh, yesterday was bank holiday. I was able to read two books, which is such a success for really, because I've been going through, as you can probably imagine, a reading slump as well. I'm, I'm not doing well, honestly, and this is my time for myself. So I have more errands to run, but in the meantime, I'm going to be filming a video and talk about things which I love. So I hope you're doing better. <laughs> I hope you're doing better. I hope life is like hectic um, at the moment and I hope that you're able to enjoy the small things and the little things. I have been able to enjoy um, my boyfriend and the time we spent together, obviously, but we had a holiday that was cancelled because he was in a motorcycle accident um, that was in May as well. It just, it's a constant, you know, just life. It's a bit much at the moment. So, <laughs> Focusing on nicer things. So my coast lights in April. What happened in April? That was a long time ago. Um, so in April, okay, yes. So I reread in April. I'm going to put that all of it here because I don't have time to fetch all of the books. Hopefully that's okay. Um, but I reread all of the Elemental Blessings books by Sharon Chin, which are cozy fantasy, um, royalty, aristocracy, uh, elemental magic. Court Intrigue, Princesses, um, Coming of Age. Each book focuses on um, different character, but you do see the main characters as secondary characters in other books. They are companion books. They are my favourite thing in the world, um, apart from Harry Potter. So yeah, I reread all of them. There are four. Because Sharon Shin, I don't know if I told you actually, I don't think I, I, don't think I did, but uh, Sharon Shin announced on Facebook that she was writing the fifth book, the hunty book for those in the know. Um, so every person actually belongs to an affiliation, um, kind of a personality trait really at birth, which is more of a, it's not really magic, it's just like you're more inclined, kind of a Hogwarts house, really you're more inclined to be um, one affiliation or one affiliation or another. And so um, there are five affiliations total and so far we focused on the first four and Sharon Chin has said in the past that she had no plans to release a hunty a fifth affiliation book but if a character came to mind who was of that affiliation and had a story to tell then she was happy to to write it and she announced on Facebook that it was going to be released this year we got an excerpt from 
uh, one of the first few chapters featuring one of the characters from the uh, from the first four books and I just I squealed <laughs> and screamed it's one of my absolute favorite series ever and if anyone watching this has ever just been so in love with a book series and suddenly a new book appears out of nowhere that you weren't expecting it just it feels so great it feels wonderful so i reread all of them in expecting you know expecting um the fifth book to be released this year um i can't wait <laughs> thank you so much i mentioned for this unexpected delight thank you thank you <laughs> so happy that was a huge treat obviously those books are my entire life so yeah I also read A Grave Matter, which is the next book in the Lady Darby series. I think I talked about that before. Um, Lady Darby is um, a historical mystery series, um, which is kind of um, gothic inspired a little bit. It's all about um, really, it really focuses on death and on what people did with dead bodies, for example, and corpses um, in the Victorian era. It's a little bit darker than um, what I usually read. However, the the tone of the books, I would say, even though the, the subject matter is quite heavy, um, I would say the tone of the books is okay and it's it's fine by me and the romance is really good and light. The heroine it keeps you safe as well. She's very capable and she's very good uh, at heart and you know that she's going to be okay, you're going to be okay. Um, I really loved it. Most of the books take place in Scotland. They are kind of blending a little bit into each other in my mind because all of them really deal with very similar um, uh, deaths and very, very, very similar mysteries. So, yeah, but very good, very good. Um, I'm just, I do have plans to, I think I talked about that before, but I do have plans to um, to film a series video just talking about the the book series I'm currently reading and I hope to finish before the end of the year. My goal is always to, if I start a series, to finish before the end of that year. So to start and finish a series within the same year. Um, and I've got a few, I think six or seven at the, at the moment, which are ongoing um, and which I want to talk about. Anyway, moving on, I also read um, Luck of the Iris, which is, um, uh, it's a pun. So it's a cozy mystery by Nancy Warren and it's a village flower shop mystery. I love Nancy Warren. She has a lot of series, uh, a lot of cozy mystery series going and I've talked about her extensively on this channel actually. Her, um, her village flower shop mysteries is my favorite series of hers it's her most recent as well um, but it's my favorite it's just so full of descriptions of flowers and i love what i love the most actually is having my phone by my side when i read her books and just uh, looking up all of the flowers which are mentioned in the books she is a master storyteller when it comes to cozies she has a lot of details in her books a lot of lovely characters a lot of characters you um love to hate as well but um lovely cast which you absolutely remember after the book is over and she does give you that absolutely cozy village community sense of um belonging I suppose which you are looking for in cozies and it's absolutely wonderful I highly recommend the series and Luck of the Iris was wonderful I loved it so so much um, next up, I read Cursed Cocktails, which was, um, again, a cosy fantasy book, um, which is completely, it's very recent. It was released this year, so in 2023, um, and it's not a sequel to Legends of Lattes, um, even though the title might suggest it's a kind of series. It's just Cursed Cocktails is, is its own thing, and it's about kind of the same plot really as Legend of Large Haze in a way, in that it's about um, a fighter who um, gives up um, their life of uh, fighting really and uh, of a mercenary and just opens a bar um, in which to serve cocktails. It's got a lovely, lovely um, story about the cocktails and the recipes being from a book that belongs to the, the main character's father. That's lovely. And I loved um, the law and the geography and politics, very light, but the geography and politics of, um, of this world really. And I'm so happy that the author is working on the second book already. Um, it was absolutely wonderful, honestly. It's got a nice queer romance as well. And I really, it was very endearing. I really, really loved it. And I wouldn't mind for reading it actually already. So um, if you're into 
such a small, um, small town, <laughs> uh, small town ventures, and the idea of um, a book with recipes and yummy sounding drinks appeals to you. Lovely characters as well, which um, whom you can't help but fall in love with, honestly, and a lovely romance, very sweet. Um, and just a nice world to get lost in that makes you safe and is very cozy. I highly recommend cursed cocktails. Um, yeah. <laughs> Next up, I read Hartwood Hotel. I actually finished the series. Um, Hartwood Hotel is a series about woodland creatures opening a hotel in the woods. It's lovely. It's a children's book. Um, it's um, it's it's got one book for each season. So it's got four books total, and we follow Mona, who is a mouse, and who starts working at the hotel in the first book. And each book is absolutely wonderful. Um, I jotted down some notes here. So the greatest gift takes place in winter. It's got royal rabbits. Um, Scent Slumber as opposed to Father Christmas, which I thought was wonderful. And um, they've got celebrations and it's a bit like Brembley Hedge, um, but just not not just with mice, but with all kinds of wooden creatures. And they have celebrations and festivals and um, all kinds of uh, shenanigans happening at the hotel, which are really lovely. But it together, it take place, takes place in spring. Um, there's, there's a new hotel nearby, which is kind of their competition, and they have to deal with that. Um, and Home Again is the last one, and it's just absolutely wonderful. Honestly, it's so cozy, and I would love an illustrated version of these books. I think they would be the perfect candidate, really, for um, an illust a gorgeous illustrated edition. Um, and uh, I would absolutely buy that. So I think it would it would be a wonderful idea, honestly. There are little illustrations in the book in black and white, but I think like a full color um, illustrated book of this, kind of like Brembley Hatch, but with a with a more elaborate story, um, like in Hartwood Hotel, would absolutely be be a hit ready right here with me essentially. I rewatched Ice Princess, which I love this film so much. It's a Disney film. Um, it's a Disney Plus film, so it doesn't channel um, back in the day, and it's a Disney Plus now. It stars um, Dawn from Buffy <laughs> as um, a high school girl, a high school geek really so she is very good at physics and um she likes ice skating as well and so um as her final project before going um before getting into harvard so as, as part of her application to harvard she has to find <clears throat> a passion project to focus on and to apply physics to and she chooses ice skating so she goes to the ice skating rink and she analyzes um ice skaters um competitive ice skaters performances and she tries to apply physics to that in order to make them better um and to correct their angles that sort of thing so she applies physics to ice skating anyway and she gets into the sport as well she starts um ice skating for herself and she becomes really good I love this film so much. It's got so much going for it, and it avoids <laughs> um, the pitfall which most of the movies from that era fell into, which is competitive women. Um, even though it's a competitive sport, and there are several women, and even um, some sort of rivalry, I suppose, with some of the girls, um, they become friends really fast, and they become kind of um, really supportive of each other really fast. And I love that. I love this movie so, so much. It's got a really wonderful female friendship. Um, it's got a sweet romance as well. Uh, the ice skating is wonderful. It's it's a very good, it's kind of a Nomad Stratfield kind of book in that you really get to know um, the, um, the, the world really that of ice skating that she gets into um, very intimately and it's lovely. I just absolutely love this movie. So I rewatched it in April and that was such a gift. It's also about um, your dreams versus your parents' dreams and how they differ and how you have to accept people for what they are really and what they want because they probably make the best choices for themselves. And if they don't, it's okay, but it's just their choice, right? Um, I read, one of the books that has stayed with me the longest, really. Um, it's called Gentleman Jim, which is a historical romance by Mimi Matthews. Mimi Matthews has written a lot of books, which I really love. And Gentleman Jim is my favourite. It's a completely 
sweep you off your feet, um, completely all-encompassing, kind of romance, kind of larger-than-life characters and larger-than-life story, which is so fast-paced. I read Deep Into the Night. It was unlike anything I've read in a while, honestly. It just took over my life. It was so... I still think about it, this book a lot every day. Um, it's about this man uh, who is um, at the beginning of the first chapter he works in a stable with the horses and the the lady of the house and him are in love um, but she's promised to another and um, basically the first chapter something major happens and he runs away promising to to become um, the man that a man that she could marry so um, a member of the, of, the, of the aristocracy, which is impossible. You can't really make yourself into an aristocrat overnight. It's got, you know, a title, everything can't acquire that um, in the course of your life if you haven't been born into it. But several years later, someone comes back and she thinks she recognises him. Might he be her childhood sweetheart? This is amazing. I, I had never read a romance like that before kind of a soulmate kind of star-crossed lovers kind of thing it's very uh fate destiny driven it's very um it's so fast-paced i just couldn't put the book down unless there's this huge mystery at the heart of the book and you absolutely want to know what's what, what the identity of this man is um if she's right if he's right if the truth is somewhere in between um I just absolutely loved, loved it. It's based on the Count of Monte Cristo, for those of you who know the story or have read it. Um, but it's a certain thing and I just completely, completely loved it. I still think about those characters. I can't think of any book, which of any romance, which has made me swoon <laughs> uh, and think, wow, this is what passion is. This is what true passion is. You can't imagine um, anywhere anyone else for those characters other than their actual soulmate it's just it's so good it's it's incredible honestly it's incredible and i read a few good weights reviews after reading because i was so swept away um and everybody said the same thing that it was very hard to put down because it's just so it's it's an amazing story and yeah i just wow so yeah gentleman jim by Mimi matthews um one of the best reads of the year for me for sure um, I rewatched Princess Diaries 1 and 2. Oh my god, I love this film so much. You could tell in April and May that I was so in need of, in need of comfort because I rewatched pretty much all of my favourite movies, really. So I rewatched Princess Diaries 1 and 2. I also rewatched Ella Enchanted, Cinderella on Prime, um, Princess Protection Program. All of those are just like comfort, comfort to watch just for me, comfort films. And I, just, I was just so happy to spend time um, rewatching them. And just being lost in that world really just it's so so good i could i could watch them every day honestly for the rest of my life and never get tired of them so they were absolutely wonderful i just they are my whole heart honestly um yeah i watched the gay divorcee um with fred astaire and ginger rogers sorry <sighs> so tired <laughs> with fred astaire and ginger rogers that was wonderful as well um, I'm actually currently slowly, little by little, watching all of the Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies, which are um, highly ranked, I would say. So I picked up a few lists uh, off the internet and I'm just going through each movie one by one. Not um, the movies which everybody is saying, you know, they're not that good, but all of the best ones. And they have been a trade, honestly. The cinematography is gorgeous, even though it's black and white, you can tell all of the costumes and her dress is absolutely magical honestly and um the dancing is great i loved the plot so so much so so much so she is um getting a divorce and she meets him and things happen they fall in love there's a lot of bento um there's a lot of relationship is really great um and there's a lot of dancing and falling in love and singing and it's a very upbeat kind of movie which i completely loved um highly recommend it I also read Rotten to the Core, um, which is a crazy mystery in the Lady Hutt Castle series, which I've talked about before. Um, it, took place, it takes place in the 1930s. This one takes, took place um, in um, 
an orchard. <laughs> I was going to say a vineyard, but no, an orchard. And it was wonderful. It made me hungry for cider, really. It made me thirsty for cider. It was absolutely great. Um, I loved it so, so much. Again, it's a great series. I actually finished it because I read an actual foul play, um, I think in May. And it was wonderful. I'm just up to date for the series right now and I really liked it. Um, it's a cozy mystery with an edge, I would say, because dialogue's just so witty and um, it's just, it's very bentry. It's got espionage, it's got um, a, a team of two ladies who are amateur sleuth but also former spies and absolutely wonderful very unique kind of series i'm so glad i picked it up um months ago because it's just it's been going so well honestly and each book is a treat so i have been um listening to og books on my commute to work i've got 50 minutes to work each morning and 50 minutes back home um each night so i've got about two hours worth of og books each day which is a lot and i've been enjoying that so much so my preference is uh, to read non-fiction during that time because I can't really focus on fiction um, on my commute. I don't know why. I just like to pay attention to my surroundings and it's easier to do with non-fiction. And I listened to Agatha Christie, an elusive woman read by, well, written and read by, um, oh my god, <laughs> what? Um, Lizzie Worsley. Well, um, yes, I read and written, read, yes, and written by Lizzie Worsley. She is wonderful and um i'm going to spoil you actually but in may i read jane austen at home by richard well written by lucy wesley but read by somebody else and it just was not the same i love it when authors read their own books and lucy wesley reading her own books is such a treat it was such different actually to read jane austen, or to listen to jane austen at home without her own voice um she's a very she has an edge to her voice and she's a very she has a very um, baritone kind of voice and it's it's got gravitas to it and she, she's kind of a no-nonsense kind of person in her voice at least and it worked really well for the autobiography of Agatha Christie because she's kind of, she was kind of the same woman. I really enjoyed it. It was so, so great. Um, one thing that jumped out to me actually, I had no idea uh, how sweet her second husband was, Max. Um, he sent letters to her which were in messages which were absolutely wonderful and just oh it was so so great um so lovely so loving and she had quite a life she had quite a life but at the same time she um she had it well i think and um the book also talks about her disappearance uh, the episode of her disappearance but without dwelling on it too much and very much uh, and very respectfully and also taking into account what she said about the episode herself so everyone has a different theory about her but she said that she just lost her her memory um temporarily and um just want needed a break from it all and i think we just need to take that at face value at face value and it was such a good read it was such a good listen honestly um yeah i highly highly recommend it if you read it or listen to it i highly recommend listening to it but yeah i got a question lucy foreman and i watched the documentary which was made of that book actually which lucy wesley um again presents um is there anything this woman can't do um but yeah and it was the book is a is very good companion to that. You learn a lot more and you are always completely wrapped up in Agatha Christie's life for a while and Agatha Christie's works, really. She spoils a number of books, even though she tells you beforehand that um, this is going to be a spoiler, but she spoils a number of books. She also gives you um, Christie tricks, what she calls them. Christie tricks, which are kind of uh, things which Agatha Christie tend to to rely on uh, for her plots, which she tended to use over and over um, in her books. And um, they are quite interesting. And I can't wait to reread all of her books uh, in order to spot them for myself. With that in mind, um, it was wonderful. Last two in April and moving on to May. May is very good. It's going to be a very short month, don't worry. Um, next, I, I actually watched Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. This was wonderful. It stars Leslie Menville and it's kind of a Miss Betty Crew kind of, a, kind of a movie really in that she lives, she's a cleaner, um, she's a housekeeper in uh, England and one day one of the ladies for whom she cleans um, 
she she sees a dual dress in her wardrobe and she's mesmerized by it and there are a lovely 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 characters around her and it's a lovely cast of characters you fall in love with everybody Anna Chancellor is in this film I am in love with her so I, I would watch anything she's in honestly anyway she spots this dress and it becomes her goal to save up for a jewel dress and go to Paris and buy a jewel dress for herself but she's um, from a relatively um, poor background and so she, when she goes to Paris to jewel when she has saved up she realizes that you know well she doesn't realize actually that's the beauty of it but she steps into a world of you know elegance and fashion and money and um, a lot of people are lovely to her because they can see that she's here for the right reasons in a way and she's completely dazzled by everything which is beautiful which is as it should be whereas everyone else is just so blasé because it's so used to her and she is just a light and a sun <laughs> in their lives and she transforms everybody's life around, right, life around her and they transform her as well and it, it's a cinderella story honestly um a lot like Miss Pettigrew lives for a day. It's got such a happy ending. It's got several romances, um, including one of her own. And oh, I loved it so so much. It's it's honestly like, like a bonbon. Really, this film is just so so lovely. I loved it so so much, and um, it was just a light in the darkness. Honestly, it was so so good. And I wish more films. Um, like that were being made right now because it was such a breath of fresh air lovely lovely stuff and the cast is just having so much fun you can tell um yeah absolutely wonderful i'm so happy i watched it and in april i also read this rough magic by mary stewart which transported me to greece it was wonderful i love mary stewart and she has such a sense of place she's very evocative writing she writes romantic suspense um this one was one of them it takes place in greece and it's got like a smuggling plot really um it's about this girl who moves to greece and she is surrounded she she's an actress she's a struggling young actress and she uh, meets actually an actor who is kind of a who has kind of a dark past over there and a lot of things happen um it's got a lot of lots of descriptions of food and of um the greek summer and the coast and the the lovely people around her it's got a lovely romance of course it's got suspense it's got um mystery I love Mary Stewart. It's always a good time, honestly. It just, I loved it so, so much. And I was transported to Greece for just a moment, for about two days. That was for me to read. So that was a nice holiday. <laughs> um, moving on to May. So, May, I have been watching one of the best TV shows I've ever watched, um, which nobody talks about because it's kind of old now. It's called Pie in the Sky and it stars Richard Griffiths who plays Uncle Vernon in the Harry Potter movies. Believe me or not, he is actually a very, very nice character in this. And it's a crazy mystery. It's about um, a policeman who opens a restaurant called Pie in the Sky. He's a foodie, he's obsessed with food and he's obsessed with cooking and eating food and sourcing food. And he opens a restaurant, well, it's under his wife's name because it's a policeman he caught um, because he's actually in the first episode, he is um, unable to take his retirement. Something happens and the police force wants to um, to retain him actually to prevent him from retiring and to keep him in the force so he has no choice but to juggle on um, the two so he's mostly at the restaurant and sometimes it takes on cases and so Cody's mystery series with one case per episode it reminded me of Rosemary in Time the writing is very clever um, I love the characters I, it's very light-hearted. There are some episodes, there was one about domestic violence, which I don't think would fly today, um, but or at least would have a warning at the beginning of the episode because I was taken aback. But l most of the episodes, really all of them, are just so cosy and nice and light and fluffy and lovely food and lovely descriptions of food. And it was just so, so, so good. Um, there's an episode in which he takes a cookbook, for example. He has a glass of wine, he takes a cookbook, and he starts reading a passage from the cookbook to his wife, which is kind of like a travelogue, um, kind of like a, a food travel, kind of a, kind of a book, kind of a passage. 
and it's just it made me sigh it was so good i've watched it several times it was just so good it's, it's one of the things you do you know with lovely books like books you really enjoy and which you know you, you can see passages with things that you are instantly transported in and you want to reread them forever with a glass of wine and that's what he did in this scene it's just marvelous there are four seasons um, I have reached season two and it's I'm um, just slowly um, making my way through the show and it's been such a joy. I highly recommend it. Honestly, it's just one of the best finds for me this year. Um, I rewatched Enchanted. It was enchanting. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. I also finished Sister Boniface, which is a cozy mystery show with a nun. <laughs> uh, it's um, it's her companion series, really, to Father Brown. And it's absolutely wonderful. I loved season two. I loved it, loved it. Um, there was something a bit different, actually, in series two, in that you see um, Sister Boniface being projected in some scenes as something she's not. So, for example, she has, like, dream daydreams of um, being, I don't know, um, a singer or something and you see a clip of her singing before she comes back to reality um but it's it's just lovely actually to see her in very different contexts um series two is absolutely charming honestly she she's a kind of person um uh, what sets her apart i would say is that she's a nun and she uses physics really to solve crimes so she's a a geek really she's a scientist and she always can tell um whatever scientific Thing is going on in one scene and to, to solve it and she's wonderful about that honestly. In terms of food I have been making some of my um, go-to recipes I would say and some of the things which I love making and make well I think I have perfected those things however small. Uh, peanut butter and banana milkshake I make a wonderful kind of peanut butter and banana milkshake uh, it's not me it's just a recipe I found online kind of modified it. But for one person, you need one frozen banana. So what I do is I ripen bananas at home and then when they're ripe, I just freeze them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. So you need one frozen banana. Um, I personally put two tablespoons of peanut butter per person. That's just me. You can do with one. Um, but I just like peanut butter a lot. So I'm addicted to it. So I just put two tablespoons of peanut butter. One teaspoon of cinnamon. You don't need to, but it, it has a nice, a nice little depth to it. And one glass of milk. That's it. And just blend it um, in a high powered blender. And that's it. It's a lovely milkshake. And I absolutely love it. Um, my boyfriend has been asking for it every single day. So we have been making that every day almost. It's so lovely and fresh. I also love at the moment freshly squeezed orange juice, no chips here, just squeeze the oranges, but it's been absolutely lovely to have freshly squeezed orange juice every week, so I buy a huge bag of um, oranges which are made for juicing and I choose them at home and absolutely lovely, honestly such a treat again to have something fresh and nicely squeezed just for you in the morning. Um, and I also make fresh guacamole. I personally don't make it traditional way at all, uh, I think. Um, but I put uh, avocado, coriander, um, kosher salt, a little bit of cayenne, which is not traditional at all, um, lime juice, <clears throat> freshly squeezed lime juice and garlic powder. And I absolutely adore it, um, especially with lots of coriander in. It's just wonderful and we have been enjoying that over everything honestly so yeah very nice traits speaking of food and <laughs> this was such a foodie month for me i actually watched stanley tucci searching for italy which was a revelation and one of the best things that happened to me this year was watching that it's a food documentary about his um travels to italy so he travels to one different region of italy there are 20 total there are two series so far uh one different region of italy per episode and he just talks to people about the best food there it is mouth-watering to say the least it is gorgeously filmed so informative it makes you want to go to italy it makes you want to eat it makes you fall in love with food all over again 
and I just I I just fell in love with this and I have been listening in May to um Sunny Tucci, Sunny Tucci's taste his food memoir so it's been a very Sunny Tucci and food a month really um food focused month but it's been absolutely wonderful his memoir is so good it's a great companion to the series he talks about all of the recipe all of his favorite recipes from his childhood um with his first wife, his children, his second wife, um, in England, in Italy, in America, everywhere. It's just, it's so lovely. Um, he narrates the audio book. He does a very good job. And I just absolutely loved both of those things. They have been taking over my life. I just can't, I keep thinking about them um, really every day. Also, it's, it's obsessive at this point. Wonderful, wonderful. Um... Next, <laughs> last two, Appointment in Bath by Mimi Matthews, which is a historical mystery in the same series, A Gentleman as Gentleman Jim. If you're looking for, well, I'm not going to say too much about it because it wasn't a memorable read, but it was a good read. Um, it's, if you're looking for a very sweet heroine whom you want to protect at all costs, you're looking for Meg in Appointment in Bath. Um, she lives with a very difficult father who um actually appears at the beginning of the series and he appears in gentleman jim um he is the villain in gentleman jim actually and he's her father in that book and so she she has a very unloving family and she stammers as well so she has no self-confidence whatsoever and she meets Ivo from this river uh, family so he's um there's a rivalry between her family and their family and she meets him and he gives her all of the love um that she deserves and it's a lovely story honestly I love Matthews um yeah and last but not least yesterday I read Deadly Director's Cut and I think I didn't talk about I can't remember whether or not I talked about um, this series, which is the um, Catskill Resort series, I don't think so, no, but I read this year, I read the two books in the Catskill Resort series, and the second one I read in May, um, it's a series of books actually written, um, written by Vic Delaney, who is a queen of mystery, it's a cozy mystery series set in the 50s at a Catskill Resort, think Dutch dancing with a mystery, I actually first heard about it on um, Sarah, the bookish Nature's channel, um a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago and i picked up the first book and the atmosphere is completely completely on point really it's just it's the movie if a mystery was thrown into the movie um so elizabeth is actually running the catskill resort i think it's called Hagemans. um she's running it which in the 50s already is a bit of a um, is a bit of a departure. Well, it's it's new. It's a novelty for a lot of characters actually who always comment on a woman running a resort um, in Catskills. So she wins it, and um, her mother is a fallen star. She is a former starlet, and um, they she inherited this resort, and she gave her uh, she gave the resort to her daughter to run. And a series of mysteries happened there, and it's got no, a nice, nice, nice atmosphere. Really lovely. You can feel you you can. It really transports you again. It's got a sense of place. It really transports you back there and then, and absolutely loved it. Really, the first one is great. Um, the second one is wonderful. Well, I finished it yesterday, and it was sultry in all the right ways, and kind of sexy and sultry and cozy, and a bit of an edge as well. The the main character Elizabeth is um, she, she's definitely, um, she def definitely has an edge to her, she's not, she, she's not unkind, but she, she knows what she wants, and she, she goes for it, so, um, it's lovely, she's got a mystery to her as well, I love this series, um, but yeah, I'm up to date now, and that's it for me for the month of May, I'm going to, um, actually go buy some groceries, which we need desperately before the move, and I'm going to go to physical therapy tonight, but today I think um today I'm going to try and squeeze in another book 
and um, just enjoy the rest of the weekend. So I hope you are having a fantastic weekend and a fantastic month of May. I will see you at the end of June for my June favourites for sure. And perhaps before then, uh, you never know if I have time to make a video, I will. And yeah, so um, happy, happy month of May, happy end of spring. I think everyone is thinking about summer right now. I'm not, I'm enjoying spring for what it is really. I hate summer. So um, yeah, I hope you have nice weather where you are, um, your favorite kind of weather. And I will see you very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching, bye.